the Lord also has given me an opportunity to lead a movement that we call Jacob Movement or with that intentional discipleship in the Philippines where I I lead more than 7,000 churches in the whole Philippines. Having said that, I have experience uh, seeing pastors like church planters in the Philippines, just to let you know, or probably you know it already, we have about 68,000 local churches in the Philippines. I was ordained by the PCEC as a bishop, and I begin to understand what is the condition in the Philippines. So, I begin to look at the church of 68,000 because this is according to our reports. Uh, I've been asking our leadership that do we have a record that says how many churches died? <laughs> and we, re we realize we don't have records on that. Because we only, we only you know, highlights the planting, but we don't highlight the dying. <laughs> and we also don't try to be honest with ourselves where are the living church and the uh, assuming living church? <laughs> so if we would be honest, I have the opportunity to go from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Maniwala ko kayo, may patay, may nagpap, nagbubuhay buhayan, at may buhay. Ngayon po, welcome, sasama na po kayo doon. Hindi ko alam kung makakapagpatuloy kayong buhay, o bakal sa kayo sa nagbubuhay buhayan, O isa kayo sa mamamatay na ito natin na siya ba? The challenge is always in front of us whether when we start, can we finish it? Amen. Because most pastors, they love church planting because they have financial support for the next three years. Then they leave the church, receive the support, then they will plant again the church because they will look for another financial support. Don't do that. Be honest to your calling. People are asking me, how do you grow your church, Bishop Oriel? I stay on one place for the next 27 years. Because you will never see the impact of your commitment to kayo ay global pastor. Are you global pastor? Yung pastor ng pangkalawakan. <laughs> yung hindi mo malama kung nasaan. <laughs> we want you to be a pastor who stay on your place just like book of Mark chapter 10 that says the kingdom of God is just like a master seed. When it is planted, it will grow, it will become the largest of all. There is a season for smallness. There is a season the pastor can be poor. There is a season where you start small. But please do not remain small. Pwede maging mahirap. Huwag lang patagal. Alam ng misis niya yan. Pag ang pastor ng church planty, magsisimula ng mahirap yan. Pero pag hinabaan mo yan, gulo yan. Sa Pilipinas, marami mong mahirap na pastor kasi ang ginawa ko nung nagpastor po sila, wala silang pangitain malinaw sa buhay nila na tuloy-tuloy ito. Itatalin ko ang sarili ko sa lugar ko. Amen? Pag church planting, hindi pwede manikot. Plant yourself, grow. Say that word, grow. grow. When you plant something and it doesn't grow, that's not planting. That is posting. That's not planting. When you plant, it must grow. Can I have an amen? So I'd like to challenge every one of you that when you plant the church, plant it like the kingdom of God. It must start small mustard seed. But when it grows, it becomes the largest of all. It's starting today. I want you to dream from your heart supernaturally that I will become a pastor of a Lord's church. Amen. 
patay. Mas marami sa atin, baka harap natin maging pastor. Bihirain na ng harap na pag pastor ako, large church. Listen very carefully, when your church is small, no impact. No influence. Pati barangay tayo, hindi kayo kapansin. When my church is too small, I park my car. Barangay tayo, shoot me away. Hey, don't park here. This is not for you. You're a pastor. You park there. Today, when I, my church began 10,000, I think five years ago or 10, six years ago, when it turned out to become 10,000, the barangay tayo said, walang paparating niyo, si pastor lang to. Sabahan ko. Nung ako'y pinakasal, nag-asawa ko, I got married, even my mother, you know, don't believe on me. When my wife, during our wedding, my wife is smiling, and my mother in law said, Buka mo siya doon tumawa. Don't smile too much. You know that you married a pastor. <laughs> well, that's bad right there. Eh? Amen. Pero ngayon, lumago na pa yung simbahan, masenso po ay ko, siya na ngayon ang kagalukod pag kain ko. Amen. Makakadagpil ka isang mabiyanan natin. Amen. Lahat ng church planter, kaysa niyo po ang puso ko sa inyo. Makinig po kayo mabuti. Pag maliit ang church, maraming pastors, doon po sa 68,000 churches na yun, if I would ask, not every one of these pastors were able to send their kids to school because they were poor. Not every church planters, not every pastor out of that 68,000 have their own house. Not everyone of that 68,000 pastor have even a motorcycle. Think about it. You are about to enter a life that is full of challenge. Kaya habang hindi mo nag-graduation, pag-resent ka ng atat, baka hindi mo kaya. Sino rin yung tutuloy? Kaso ka may pastor, tutuloy ka may. Challenging po, kapatid. Because you know what? Ang sweldo, maliit. Kung ikaw mag-church planting at pastor ka ngayon, baba binata ka, dahil mag-pray ka na. Baka walang hindi ka na makapag-asawa. Kasi hindi sikat ang pastor ngayon sa pag-asawa. Kasi pag tinanong mo dala na ngayon, gusto mong asawa ng pastor? Hindi nyo sila na talaga. Bakit? Pastor, maganda na ang buhay ko, sisarain ko po ba doon. Kaya yung mga pinata ko dito, buha ko sa inyo, baguhag mo yung lahat. Magpakakul ka na. Bakit ito sinasabi ko ito? Because ang pagkapastor, hindi biro po talaga. I experienced when I passed to a church when I was so young, I realized there was an experience I was preaching without electricity because I can pay the bill. The toilet is without water, I can send my members to the toilet because there is no water, I can pay the water bill. The only thing that works is the telephone, and while I'm lifting up the phone, the owner of the building is cursing me because I can pay the building. Dumaan din po ako sa hirap. Kaya ako po, alam ko po, wala akong ibang makakapagsalita sa pasto, yung kapwa niya pasto. Alam ko po ang buhay ng pasto. You know, the hardest part is how you grow your church significantly. Because when your church grow, it means from 30 to 35, that's church growth. But 30 to become 3,000 is significant growth. Your goal, your prayer, your desire, your vision, your plan is to come up with a significant church. Hallelujah. That should be your vision. Huwag kayong gagaya sa kapitbahay ko na 30, 30 ko ako. Don't do that. Because ang challenge po is not just to plant a church. Listen very carefully. The challenge, we want to grow the church in the Philippines because we want to transform and change this nation. The vision is too big to contain in the Philippines that one day you're a church planting here. Who knows one day the Lord will be sending you out from the Philippines and then you will become a great missionary. 
Listen very carefully. It's not easy to start something and then you will not continue. I've been, I've been meeting pastors. They've been planting church three, four, but all those four or five churches that they have planted, they barely did. Why? Because they don't have vision that I will establish my life and my ministry. You know, when the Lord said, when God said through Paul, He sent a letter to Titus and He said, the reason I leave you here in the island of Crete is because that you would finish the finished task. There is a reason why the Lord has called you. All of you here have now assignment. You have now your assignment. I want you to believe that out of thousands of people on that area, God made a decision that you will be a man. Yeah. You have to see that. That out of thousands of people, the Lord has chosen me to become the pastor in this church. That's why every morning you have to come out on the street and say, these people are all blessed by God. Why? Because I am here. I am the one the Lord has called to this place. Sino naniwala na kayo pinagpala na kasi ko? Hindi kayo nagpupunta doon. Listen, you don't come to the place to be blessed. May mga pastor kasi, you know, gusto mong magplan ng church, magano ka sa alam na hindi ko ang tarot ko, may bahay ka. You come to that place out what you can get. Wrong motive yan, pare. I want you to come to those planting churches na ginagawa mo because I will be a blessing to this place. Hindi ako pupunta dito para kumuha ako ang magbibigay. Kasi na sa inyo nakikita nyo that you will be a blessing. Listen, in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, 2, and 3, He said, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. You see, God said, you are not just to be blessed. The end result of your blessing, you will be a blessing. Pastor, don't look for blessing. Be a blessing. Amen. You are not pastoring right now to be blessed. You are a blessing to this church. Amen? Amen. That's why I encourage you. Pastor Riel, what do you think, according to the Bible, should I do if I plant the church? Remember, there are thousands of churches that never grow. They beat to a lot of training like this, but still they cannot grow. Why? Is it because of their ability? Is it because of their training? Not at all. Listen, Jesus gave us the scripture to focus our mind how to do it. If you read in the book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1, in those days, the numbers of disciples were increasing in numbers. That's verse 1, chapter 6. You know what that is mean? When they started the New Testament church, their focus is not to raise up church members, but to raise up disciples. And that is the first point that I want to read to you. You are to pastor to produce disciples. One day when people will ask you, how many members do you have now? I'm a church planting pastor. How many members? Tell them, I have no members. Why? I have disciples. Yung iba kahit eh. Alam niyo kung bakit? Mukhang walang plan. Yung iba kahit eh. Alam niyo kung bakit? Siya nga, hindi na disciple eh. Sino sa inyo nagpapastor ka na hindi ka na disciple? May problema ka. Sino rin yung mga pastor na magpapastor pero siya, hindi ako na disciple? O paano ako mag-disciple? Nobody can disciple. How can I disciple people? May ba't kaya ng church planting? Hindi ka na mapag-disciple ng church planting ka ba? Nako, kung itinatas ko ako ang standard natin. A pastor is a disciple. This is very good. Based on our experience, I've been talking to a lot of pastors. This is the pastor who maintains the church right now and the pastors who preach, teach, and lecture their people. That's it. When they preach, they are so happy. When they teach, they are so glad. 
Because people attend, people listen, and people take those. Pagkanyan na si Bako, hindi na siya. Because what we need right now are pastors that can disciple people, can equip people, really say, and can bring the gospel community to the people so that they are not just attending, but their people are involved in. Yeah. They are not just listening, but they are doing what they heard. They are not just taking notes for those information, but they are experiencing transformation. Yeah. 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 It never reaches to at least fifteen percent believers in our Philippines because we produce members, not disciples. So I'm not going to be so mad. Si Tito kung sa sama pastor, ang intentional disciple ng si Paul, tungo sa akin church planting ng dalawa. Ayaw pa din magkaras. Alam ba? Mas madali magpris kaysa magkikuhi. Mas madali magtis kaysa magdisciple. You hear? That's why many pastors, they think, they could, if I could preach, I could preach, I could preach. I can do it. No. You have to go to the next level. Because the Bible in Ephesians 4.11, the Bible minister will call by God to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The job of the pastor is not just to preach, but to equip people so that your people can do the ministry. Can I have a moment? Most pastors can grow their church planting, you know, job because they focus on program, but they never focus on people. Program means the only thing you want is to have Bible study on Tuesday, a midweek service on Wednesday, Bible study on Thursday, prayer meeting on Friday, another Bible study on Saturday, and on Sunday Bible study. You only spend two hours a day in a total of 14 hours or six. 12 to 14 hours a week. You do that, you don't grow your church. Because ministry is not just preaching and teaching. We have to remind this newly, past, newly ordained pastor that when you pastor a church, there is a need for equipping and discipling your people. Amen. 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 Now listen, that's why I personally believe the training that we receive here should be continued to be trained, right? So I'm happy to hear from Pastor, uh, you know Pastor Carlos is the one who encouraged me to start a church. But, ano pa si Pastor Carlos noon? Batang bata pa po siya. Kasi po, 27 years na akong pastor. Imagine, 27 years ago, Kuyo Kapos is the one who encouraged me to pastor the church. So, although ako ay isang baka, he trusted me that I could plant the church. But I focused, because he is so good on the campus ministry, I started a church in the campus. I never forget, he always told me, Oriel, is I for your people? Is I for your people? So that man helps me a lot when I learn how to do the ministry. Church planting, listen very carefully, it's not just preaching and teaching. Get ready for discipleship. Get ready for this intentional discipleship for your people. Because do not be like other pastors that they just want to preach and teach. The, 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 only, the numbers of hours they work a week is only 40 months. Listen, you can add more effective work if you add more equipping Ngayon pa lamang pagandaan nila. Now, I encourage you this. If you can find a way to learn how to disciple this intentional discipleship, I really encourage you. Nationwide po, we are trying to help many pastors to go back to the basic. Basic. Let me say it again. Basic. Church planting is a simple basic thing. Because if you don't know the basic, you will be sick. Okay? If you don't know the basic, you will be sick. Okay? So, basic po yun. Pastor ng people is kama. Pastor ng people is good. Pastor ng the nature is good. But it doesn't carry 
the spirit of discipleship and equipping your own. Don't forget that. Amen. So once you plant a church, I encourage you, the goal is to produce disciples. People are asking me, Pastor Ray, how do you produce disciples? I believe about 3G. You know what's the meaning of 3G? The three generational discipleship. When I disciple somebody, I see to it that the person I disciple is also discipling. That is three generational ministry. This is what we think. Majority of the church in the Philippines is not undergoing disciple making. Now, that's why churches, as long as the pastor is alive, the church is alive. And then the pastor got the heart attack <laughs> because he do everything. Are you listening? Then the church stopped. Listen very carefully. I really highly encourage every one of you to believe on the idea of Jesus Christ when he said, Go and make disciples. That's the vision. Going and making disciples must be the hardcore vision of every church planter. You need to keep on preaching the gospel. You have to preach the gospel correctly. You have to tell the people the plan of redemption, the plan of renewals, and the plan of restoration for the lives of these people. Then, when they believe on the gospel, see to it that you have to form a gospel community. That's the way how to start it. And when you develop the gospel community, when you plant the church or go into a gospel community, impart the gospel to us. And that is to win souls to make disciples. See to it that every believer, the gospel is clear. And they hear not the other gospel. Amen? Because the true gospel redeem, renew, and restore people. Amen? And once you preach the true gospel, they will join the gospel community, we call it church. And that gospel community will never stop spreading the gospel cross, which is the Great Commission. Amen. Amen. So I really encourage everyone that this afternoon, have the vision that you will become a pastor of a large church. So start from a small beginning, but I will never remain small. Amen. Amen. I believe God will help me I will grow my church. Last and final. Before you go, do not forget that the God whom who called you is a supernatural God. When you go out there in your ministry, everything is limited. You have limited resources like money. You have limited personnel company you. You have a limited space. Everything is limited. But let us not forget the God of heaven, the source of everything, which I call supernatural source, is always there for you to back you up. Yeah. To back you up. Yeah. And in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, it says, The Lord has blessed you with all the heavenly blessings there is already blessing in the heavenly available for you. And the only thing requirement for you to access the supernatural resources is your supernatural faith. Hindi lang tayo dapat may vision ng palago, pero meron dapat tayong faith na kasama. Amen? I believe that supernatural faith serve like a highway from, from earth to heaven. That every time you have faith, that releases up in heaven, all the resources from heaven will go down from that spiritual highway that we call supernatural faith. Kala mo ba, gusto ng gusto ni Lord i-bless ang sipahan mo? Amen. Kala mo ba, ready, ready na lang si Lord ibagsak lahat ng pagkapala sa'yo? Pag maharal ng anak mo, pag pili ng church building mo lahat, ready, ready na, ang problema, walang tulay para bumaba yung heavenly blessing sa'yo. Ang tulay na yun, walang iba, kundi ang yung supernatural kung may asawa kayo, mga misis, ang mga misis ng church na tawag niya, pangalawang banal na espiritu. <laughs> mga misis, ha? 
Mga misis, you are the second Holy Spirit of your husband. You have the big hub of word of encouragement like the Holy Spirit with your husband. Amen? Because sometimes your husband got crazy and the wife said, don't worry. The heavenly blessing will be upon you. <laughs> your wife must be a great encouragement. Do not go to the field without your wife. His presence is not needed. What we want is the whole life of the wife. Because your wife will always boost your faith. When your wife said, Sweetheart, we don't have money to buy this, to buy this. Just tell the wife, wife, you know, to encourage your husband. Don't worry. If you don't have money now, wait. The help from heaven is coming to us. Amen. Amen. Jesus to the rescue. <laughs> Amen. Pero pag inaway mo, ano naman buhay ko? Kung magpapakasya ng pastor, magulo ko yan. Kasi po yung mga wife, katalang yung pastor, ano ba tinawag ka? <laughs> Hindi rin nakatulong si Lira. <laughs> so mga pastor's wife, I really encourage you to love your husband. Amen. First, dapat maninaw ang vision. Pangalawa, may supernatural pay tayo. Tama? And then, please, pangatlo, huwag niyong makalimutan. Keep on learning. Amen? Wala na kong masama kung hindi ka magroon mag-disciple, hindi mag-aral ka. Sa amin po, sa intentional discipleship, we have different places with mentor and with coach pastors. Well, we have, bago kami naging 7,000 churches, nag-start na kami sa pitong church. Yung pitong na yung tinuro namin mag-disciple, lumago, ang dami na yung testimony na from 13 to 3,000. One of our disciples daw na yung came Doon po sa amin sa Santa Rosa, isa po sa disciple natin doon. We started from about 80 people, ngayon nasa 7,000 na. Because the power is in the biblical way of doing things. Wala po sa Bible na preacher, preacher, preacher lang, teacher, teacher lang. Hanapin yung Bible, ang mga pastor dapat, nag-disciple. Amen. Kaya huwag yung nagtaya doon sa lolo nyo. Kasi mga lolo natin kasi hindi nag-disciple yun eh. Ngayon, tayo naman ang mapauso. Sino nito mapauso yung mga discipleship sa iba? So, hindi lang kayo na, hindi lang malinaw ang vision, ha? Hindi lang malinaw ang vision, hindi lang may faith, pero hindi sa lahat. Meron kayong heart, humility, to learn again. Ha? Kung kayo yung brand with ito, it doesn't mean hindi lang kayo matuto pa. You have yet to learn the discipleship. You have yet to learn how to equip people and bring my members to the next level. Amen? Ngayon po, ang church ko po, we have now more than almost, siguro po almost 4,000 cell leaders. All my cell leaders are disciples and cell leaders. Nag-go-group po kami because yung mga leaders po namin, in-equip to train po namin, how to disciple people. Nag-model po ako bilang isang senior pastor pa paano mag-lead ng isang cell group so that I can disciple people. Ngayon po, hindi lamang po seven pastors ang gumagawa po ng text of discipleship. It goes all around the Philippines or the 7,000 church. Ang sayo-sayo po namin kasi para kami mga trade ba, lumabalik po kami sa disciples. Kumaka, pero alam ko, alam ko na ito, hindi ko na ito alam. And we enjoy learning how to, you know, be God's plan.